All right, let's continue. Let's continue this here, this meeting. Uh, this time we're going to have questions about the board members. I'm going to start off, um, and then I'll move Mr. Fadden and down the line. Uh, my my first question is for Mr. Bean. Uh, Mr. Bean, what what procedure? And, and I, everything that I've heard in this meeting is related is related that back to the uh, issuing of a of a building permit and licensing of Baracker Construction or Baracker LLC, however it was uh, entered. But what what procedure do you all take to determine if that contractor is within good standings of deport? Do you have a... Uh, we, ver we verify the license number on each application to make sure that it is still valid. Okay. At the time, at the time that this permit was pulled, was Burracker Construction in the deport database under good standing? And did the number match? Do you know that his license contractor license number match what uh, was on the application? Yes, it did. It still is active. Okay. It still is active. Yes. Um, and was and and, and uh, also for land disturbance. Um, to my knowledge, I believe land disturbance can be. It's a test that can be taken by anybody on land. Land disturbance permits and uh, land disturbance licenses are issued by the Department of Environmental Quality. It's an RLD license. Mr. Burracker, Dave Burracker, <coughs> holds an RLD license. So if he was the RLD on the application, then he would, and he holds that license, he would be the responsible land disturber, am I correct? That is correct, and that license is still active. And that license is also active. Um, I think the only questions, uh, I think the only two questions that I have Um, Mr. Fan, you were talking before. Would you like to? Yeah, uh, Mr. Bean, if, if I remember, the, the first time we had this meeting, this question <coughs> of the, the difference of names came up, and and it's a long time ago, but it seems to me like even though the people who filled out the application may or may not have had a license the people to whom you actually issued the permit did. Does that sound familiar? That is actually how I opened up my statement today. That's what I thought. Thank you. Mr. Head. Uh, I, I would like to explore the, the uh, approval of the, of the building plans. Uh, the department does require a set of plans to be approved by the department before permit can be issued, is that correct? Yes, for the code requirements. Okay. And that plan is required to be available on the job site for the inspector? Yes, it's required to be on site for inspections. What is the purpose then of the plans being available on the job site for the so, inspector? for reference back to what they're supposed to be building. Well, in reference particularly to the, the uh, <coughs> plan calling for a 12 12 pitch on the garage, and this was not done on the, on the job site. Also, the, the uh, framing over the garage was also supposed to be conventional framing to allow for attic space and storage. This was not done either. Does not that not fall under No, it's the, not required to match the plans. As long as it meets the code, that's what we have to inspect to. That doesn't seem that it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that, that a builder would be able to on his own just put up what he feels like he should when he's supposed to be following the state of Virginia is very lenient on that. The model code specifically states you have to build it 
per the plan as it's designated. It has to look similar to the plan. That's the model code. Virginia does not adopt the administrative portions of the model code. Virginia is very lenient on that. Okay, well one other question concerning the, the actual roof was, uh, was <coughs> trusses were used instead. Do we know whether those trusses were, the bottom cord was modified to accept storage or not? That I do not know, but the trusses were not intended to handle storage. Well, but that was a requirement for the contract, and also there was, uh, there was, Mr. there was, Mr. I, I don't there, know there was contracts. There was flooring put down for storage. So if you put down flooring for storage, storage is going to be put there. Uh, again, I do not know what the contract states, and we don't enforce the contract. Well, to me, that would be probably a safety issue because if, a, if that becomes a storage area, then the, the roof could collapse, the truss could collapse, and certainly by the, the viewing the picture that was submitted, it appears to be two before us, which would not be modified to accept storage, I, I, in my opinion. That's all. And Mr. Major, also for you again, um, we've heard lots of discussion over the last two hours. Um, just remind us again, because as uh, has been stated, this board um, shall have the power to uphold, reverse, or modify the decision of the official. Um, specifically, at the time of the May 3rd meeting, what were the decisions that you had made that we are upholding, reversing, or modifying? There was no decision stated at that time. So the, the appeal that was provided to this board? Was stated as possible code violations. So you're, you did not have documentation nor was it provided with the appeal? I've never provided a written document. Well, at this time, um, you know, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to state that the, what I see what, and what I hear from all parties is the, the main objective is that we're after construction, whether it be LLC or however they was uh, recognized. Um, Mr. Beam has Mr. Beam's department issued a permit to Burracker, wherever, uh, for Mrs. Atwood's house, based on correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Beam, correct, based on your database or whatever you guys have in your office, um, and that uh, you believe that it was legitimate through the state of Virginia, is that correct? Is uh, the board the board in agreement with that? That that Burracker construction was in fact uh, acting as a legitimate contractor through the board. Mr. Mr. Hotep, you got it. Well, now I, I, the if that's a salient issue of this, I think that's outside <coughs> the scope of this board. Um, Council was making the point that it would be our responsibility if that was the case that we would cite everything as violations. I think that's bigger than we are. I think our responsibility is determining whether or not his um, decisions are or aren't according to the code. And um, to go beyond that, can, I can we back up for just a second? I, I wasn't at the first meeting. I wasn't at. I wasn't pointed to this board. Have we gone to discussion? Have we closed it? I just want to make sure. Yeah, clear I, I was there. wanting to jump into that. I think you know everybody's done. I, I think we should go on to agenda item five, which is okay. discussion for at this point. I just want to make sure okay. that we are, we're we're in discussion. discussion. We can move to discussion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to get Dan? Mr. Chairman, may I ask yeah. one question? Yes. Um, and I, I know uh, Mr. Ham is aware of it, but 
licenses are not transferable. And I want to draw to your attention, Mr. Ham's attention, so he can, since he's your counsel, 18 VAC 50 22 210. I think you must take into consideration. Licenses are not transferable. What Mr. Beam told you that Veracker Construction has a valid contractor's license under Martha Burracker, that's correct. But the applicant is Burracker Construction LLC, and the Commonwealth has clearly stated licenses are issued to firms as defined in this chapter and are not transferable. So the chairman's question to Mr. Beam was with regard, does Burracker Construction have a license? And he responded, yes. Burracker Construction LLC is the applicant, not Burracker Construction. And I think the board needs to be aware of 18 VAC 50-22-210. We're, we're in the discussion portion of the meeting at this point. And I want to think it's appropriate that we reopen stuff in the interest of fairness to the other folks. I think it would be fair to let them respond to that please, and then please. really get into discussion without having further comments from other people. Mr. Bain, answer your question. You asked him a direct question, he answered it directly. I don't have anything further to add. And I, I encourage the board at this point in the discussion portion. I mean, if there are other things, but everybody's rested, we're all done at this point, we ought to just be talking. Board members should be discussing this amongst themselves as to what the decision should be. Okay. I move that we, that we uh, discuss it as members at this point to take no further discussion. No, yeah. yeah. I agree. So that that was my point. Is that again, if, if the exact issue that's being brought out yet again is a salient issue, that is not in our purview. That's my opinion. Um, if it was a case of item Mr. Hatcher brought up, where it's down to. You know, is that or is it not? Uh, we have to vote based on our conscience, our knowledge, um, whether or not that was a code violation. Also, on the on the uh, information that we have been given, uh, the, we need to consider all the, the evidence that has been presented when making the decision. Although they say that Mr. Russell was not not qualified to make these, and he didn't make the code decision, but he, he did give us evidence of code violation, and that was proven by the fact that the inspector made a second inspection, a follow-up inspection, and found things in violation. So in that respect, at least to, to the extent of those six items, I feel we have to agree and uphold the appeal based on those, at least a minimum of those six items. But I have concerns about other items that, that would be safety issues, and I would think this would be certainly a concern of the inspection department if there's safety uh, concerns on the job. And one in particular would be those posts that are around the deck. Now, it was discussed and said that they, they had been pushed against them, and they found that they were substantial. But the fact is that uh, the posts were not let down through the decking. They were not attached to the band as, as uh, uh, I've forgotten which, which A item it was that was shown. But those posts was actually only stood on top of the decking and toenail or either possibly screwed mm -hmm. to the surface. That is a very safety item there because as time goes on, these nail screws or whatever was used, they become old, rusted, and weak. And 
people could lean against them and this deck is more than three feet high in most of the area so that's definitely a safety issue and I think I think the building department should certainly be concerned about any safety items so that's a big concern of mine uh, Do you recall which uh, which photo? Photo? Yeah. Where, where or what Mr. Weston's oh. uh, commentary was? Uh, Is this it? Yes. And one item that I would be concerned about and that to me would be a problem that was the vertical siding had no flashing in between the, the uh, joints and the gable end of the garage. And certainly that would, certainly should be a requirement uh, where there are two pieces are butt together. Uh, that should certainly be a uh, concern that there's no flashing put there to because this would allow water to seep down between those cracks and then behind the, the uh, siding. <coughs> uh, that's not the picture there. So the, the question if that comes back to a code issue or not. So again. Well, we can't determine that it is a code violation, but it's a concern to mind that, that those things were overlooked. And I think other things were overlooked as well. Mr. Hatch, I would agree. I would agree that with you that um, there are diff there are definitely there are definitely issues with the house. I mean, the pictures reflect those issues. Uh, I'm not sure that you know. Um, I'm not sure that we can hold. No, no. I'm saying we 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 we've, we've just been instructed that we're not allowed, or we we're not uh, we we don't have the the ability to to declare code violence. That's not right. in our repertory. No, you do but, have that ability for the state code, for the state technical board. You do have that ability. And even even Mr. Beans uh, on the where the posts were altered and uh, the middle post was moved and the post is not supported. It's I can't tell if it's actually bolted to that double joist beam. Uh, this is under the deck where the, this was after your inspection. This was changed. Uh, under the direction of the owner. Uh, but certainly that would be something that would be a concern because that's supporting the roof up above and the heavy snow load could cause that, cause some problem there with that beam just sitting on the side of the, the, uh, the post sitting on the side of the beam and even however it's altered. And the, uh, the beam itself was Two looked like two two by tens that were scabbed on onto the two additional posts that was applied after one was removed, uh, and those I'm, I'm I'm quite sure were just nailed to the side of that post. And there again, over time, these these nails become uh, the, the the lumber shrinks and leaves space around the nails and weakens the the contact on that. So. That, that to me is another safety issue. And, and so all, all I'm pointing out is there, there are issues that, that are safety issues that I think should be a concern to, to the department. But at the least, the, the inspector went back and found a minimum of six violations and issued a notice of violation order. So to me, on that basis alone, we have to uphold the appeal. But only on those items, because that's the only item that we're, we're allowed to. Mr. Fenn, Yeah, I'd, I'd like to review my understanding of, <clears throat> of what we've done so far. I recall that we went into this uh, side room over here and met for about an hour <clears throat> and reviewed all of Mr. Ruskin's 65 uh, issues. Uh, we came up with uh, what
what we would tell Mr. Beam, these are uh, things that uh, we believe are code violations. And we directed him to do something about it. But we didn't say what the, what, what item of the code was violated and left him with a kind of a catch-22 because he couldn't issue he couldn't issue a, a violation against a, a non-existent code. Am I making sense? Well, but he did. But <laughs> and so, he, he actually and, did and then, issue a violation. And then, he, well, he, he did some of them. No, some of the did, ones no, that he, we... He did the ones that we selected. He did but, all flipped. But then didn't we subsequently withdraw about four or five At the of appeal? Them? Another yeah. appeal. At the appeal. Yeah, we withdrew some, right? Well, no, the evidence presented caused the majority to accept that those items were not code items, right. though, as Mr. Hatcher is saying, they were objectionable. Exactly. But they were not code violations, right. and therefore we reversed our previous decision. That's my understanding. Yeah. On yeah. six of the 12 items. Yeah. Okay. And so, other than the fact that one of the members of this board was found to have a conflict of interest, What's new today? Not really anything. It's the same thing, except, except so the Mr. Member. Klein was uh, found to have a conflict of interest, mm -hmm. which required a rehearing. But it's the same same case, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Well, I think we ought to put it to a vote. Well, I think there has to be a motion. Uh, yeah, I understand. I move we vote. All right, so Mr. You would vote. Then we take a vote on this thing. We've been here. A two vote on what? I mean, it has to be a motion. You want to make a motion? I don't know. I mean, we either Somebody uphold the appeal or we, we don't. That's what that motion has to be. Well, I make no, a motion that we appeal it. We, we support the appeal. Okay, there, there are many things that they've appealed. They've appealed. Either 120 or 60. Well, I'm saying based based on the six that were new violations that were issued after the appeal was heard. <coughs> we're not you have a report of that. Uh, Can we not reverse all of them? No, we only reverse six. Paula, can you confirm at the the appeal hearing? Well, let me back up. I'm saying we need to support. The appeal based on the twelve, the six additional violations that were issued by the building department before the appeal was heard. Before the May third meeting, or yes, before the appeal was heard. Ms. Atwood presented the the building department the inspection report, and from that respect report, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Beam issued six violations, made a different, uh, went out and re-inspected the house never re and issued six violations, uh, and I, I, I can give you that date. That was on July the 26th. No, that was when it was overturned. On June the 7th, issue 12, edition. no, that's not it. I, I have the issue the June 13th as a result of our, our findings. That was the 12th. But before that, he had made six. Uh, let me find that. Notice of violation by the building department. Right here it is. Referred to March 30th. Not intending to June the 13th. Uh, June the 13th, 2018. Notice the violation was sent to Burracker for six violations after. What's the date on that one? June, June the 13th. That was after our That was. 
Those were the ones that the brewer actors appealed later. Still another one where you had six. Are you? Not intending to tender evidence, just to. It's just the same ones that we're showing on March 30. Is that okay if I show them to help you all remember? Okay. okay. They, they got it. Any objection? Just, so, just to help you all find it. <coughs> the ones that were issued before an appeal was taken was, were the March 30. Yes. Those, those were the March 30. And then, of course, you know, you had. Yeah, this is the one that, that this is the six that he sent out. This was before our meeting. And that was that was before the May third yes. application for appeal. So thirty but days. But she's already made it, the appeal before this day. No. No? No, that was This was the original application for appeal. May 3rd. And it had a whole bunch of documents. And and with this was Mr. Rushton's report. Okay. This this was the March 30 and then well what what uh, made this uh, what forces this, uh, this reinspection? Did he just volunteer to say, I'm going out and re-inspect the house? No, I believe she, she requested the I had, after I got Mr. Rushton's report, I had notified the county multiple okay. times, and finally, um, Mr. Bean was forced to come out and re-inspect my home. And when he did, he didn't really do a re-inspection. He already had like a, a list of things he wanted to look at, and he only looked at those items and nothing else. Because I currently have two bathrooms that are not vented to anywhere. March 30th. Okay, the, the uh, notice of violation that was issued on June the 13th, there was 12 items that were submitted by the building department to, uh, to uh, Burrack Construction. And those were the result of our six board. Of those, six of those we overturned at, at the Burrack appeal. So there was, five, there was still six remaining that were not was not overturned. And that would have been, uh, number one was overturned, number two was was not overturned, number three was overturned, number four was overturned, number five was not overturned, number six was overturned, number 10 was, over, was not overturned, number 11 was not overturned. Uh, number seven was overturned, number eight. So there were six that were not overturned. And six were. And, and, okay. and, and Mr. Dean issued a, a, a correction notice for the six that were not overturned. As far as I know. Is that, is that did you issue it? No, I did not overturn anything because it was appealed to the state. The Burr Rectors appealed that one to the state. So the, it, this board overturned six, and the six that were not overturned, the Burr Rectors appealed to the state. And then uh, Ms. Atwood and I were there together at the State Technical Review Board. They didn't hear anything because of the complex issue, and they sent it all the way back to here in May so that those issues could be reheard without the conflict present. That's why, that's why I refer to it as a rehearing. Mr. Silent called it a new hearing. We're, you know, six to one, who cares? Um, but that's, that's how we got back here today. And so, if, if the, well, it's discussion time, so I won't try to proffer anything else other than history. The, the ones we overturned, we overturned them because we couldn't identify a specific code that they violated. And right. Unless we can come up with a specific code right now, then we this is, we're done here. Um, you have a chart that has specific codes because when we went to the state technical board, they said that once the board, because not making, Mr. Bean not making a decision is a decision. So when you guys think that there is a code, it is Mr. Bean's responsibility to find the code, which he did not do. He just put out the notice of violation saying the local board found this. And that is not the proper way to do it, and the, that board told him that. That's not what happened. That is what happened. 
They didn't rule on any merits at the state technical board. We're in discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hatcher, for bringing it up. You know, this, this is this for me. It's huge. Some and part of this case is I was not present at the first meeting. And some of this, some of these questions that we are discussion that we're having right now, I can't chime in on because I don't right. know. You know, so. Um, well, my question would be, what, what, how, what is the standing of the six that were not overturned? Are they still in force? To me, they are. They haven't been overturned. There were 12 total that the board came up with. Six were overturned, so that leaves six that are still alive. Mr. Hatcher, as I understand what they said was, the six that we did not overturn, Mr. Brubaker appealed them to the state, and the state actually did nothing and dropped them back to us. So right. we can either find code violations and, and come up with a code that's being violated, or we can reaffirm our previous decision. I think. Do you want to make a motion yeah, on Dan, that? Dan, Dan, I, you, you were here. You, you, did, did I say that right? Uh, what, Paula, would you have the meeting notes from that? I, that is a long time ago. Well, let's look at what we would not overturn. The work sessions and the... Uh, not so much the work session, but what Mr. Hatcher is referring to is when we took a vote. What, what we did not... What, what created the, the Burracker construction taking it to the TRB. What we did not overturn was number two on this, this list. I don't know if I can give you the number. Actually, let's... Paul has got it. Yeah. Um, at the June 7th hearing... Um, which was this appeal hearing. The motion at that point, when Wendell Hatcher made a motion to accept the appeal on items 610, 11, 12, 20, 22, 23, 37, 38, 92, 93, 101. The motion was seconded by Mr. McFadden and all voted in approval, Mr. Klein dissented. Okay. Now, do you have the ones that we overturned at the next hearing? I do not have those because that's not part of this appeal, Mr. Hatcher. Oh, okay. So I did not bring those minutes. Well, I suggest we look at the ones that we that we did not overturn at the at that meeting. And the first one on that item would be the joist hangers are missing and fasteners and adhesive at the basement stairway. And there's a picture of it there. The next one that we did not overturn was ceiling joist cut with no header at the fireplace chimney through the rear attic. And the other one was a porch, the porch guardrail posts do not extend through the deck and then are not fastened to the structure except with a diagonal finish, with diagonal finish nails. The finish nails are not considered to be structural connections in a guardrail application. Would be members of the guardrails have shrunk and are no longer tight. Guardrails should be designed to withstand 200 pounds of pressure horizontal force at any location and 50 pounds of horizontal force per linear foot of railing. That was not overturned. That was overturned. Sorry. When it was not overturned, was st the stair string attachment of both porch steps and in inadequate to porch steps are settling and pulling away from the porch. Metal stair hangers are recommended. This is a safety concern. And the stringers themselves were just sitting on dirt, no, no concrete pad, just, just dirt. The other one that was not overturned was was the foundation that I was saying that there's no pad under the uh, stair stringers, and they were already pulling away. 
But Thatcher, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a statement here. This, this case is huge. I mean, it's, it's a lot. There is a lot to this case, and more so than I believe that this board. I mean, it's, you know, we've, you guys had a previous meeting. There was stuff that I'm not familiar with in the previous meeting. Um, I, I, and I realize there there is issues. There's pictures. I see the I see the problems. I want to make a recommendation that we pass this on to the technical review board. I don't feel comfortable with with everything that's going on or has in past and present to make a recommendation. Um, the only thing that I will say is I believe that. You know, I don't. I don't know whether the barackers were, you know, in good standing with the with decor or not. Whether they're, you know, whether they um, was operating without a license based on name only. That's the feeling I get. Uh, maybe they, and, and it's possibly that they violated. Uh, not filling out a fictitious name for their business, <clears throat> um, but myself, um, I I think that as far as the licensing issue, that the building department acted in the correct manner based on what they had to, you know, go off of. So I think we should make a motion to it passes on the technical review board or or you guys give me what your thought or input is on that, that's not an option though, right no well there's two things that need to be decided or maybe one of these two things um, first is is the merits of this and i know you mr hatcher of are, are piecing together a emotion whereby the six of these <coughs> items um, would again be found to be violations um, if we're going to be going that route we need to be able to show that our minutes are very clear and we need to be able to perhaps the document you're going through maybe we spend a few minutes and figure out exactly which ones it is and then identify them Th that's that's one thing you know and, and generally the other so the merits of this uh, you know and you can find that in anything you want to you can find that all of the things that she says are wrong or wrong you can find that none of them are wrong or anything in between. Uh, and then the other issue is the jurisdictional issue raised um, and the timeliness issues. And I have recommended, I, I think it would be best to make a decision on, on the merits um, so that the technical review board that's going to get this next is will know what y'all's opinion is so we don't have to do this a, 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 again. Um, but that's up to you guys, whatever you want to do. I think we should affirm our last decision, reaffirm it. And so what decision is that? That was that there were six that, uh, that, uh, it would have to go that back Ms. To the Atwood, uh, uh, Ms. Atwood's um, uh, technical expert had brought to our attention, and, and we were able to identify the specific <coughs> code that, that they violated. And then the six we overturned because we could not identify the sp I mean, there were safety issues. We didn't like them. It was bad workmanship, perhaps, but we couldn't actually come up with a code violation. Sure, because of the confusing, I understand. So, I think what so, so that so uh, my point is, that what's before us is exactly the same thing that we looked at way, way back when, and the only difference is because we had to rehear this thing because Mr. Uh, Fly had a conflict of interest and was sitting on this group last time. That's the only reason we're reviewing this. Well, how long would it take you to get that? Uh, I, I've got okay. um, For the state technical board, when I spoke to them, it has to go back to the original one without the second appeal. So that would be the 12 violations. Because when he, we did the informal fact finding, that was, that that was what I appealed, so that's where it has to start. Well, this board can find whatever it wants, and if there are specific six that they happen to, just because the this, they reaffirm the same ones that they reaffirmed in June, 
that they all derive from this appeal. So you don't have to pick a specific number. You're rehearing the, her appeal from the original 60. And from among those 60, you can pick as many as you want or as few as you want. Um, what I believe Mr. Hatcher is saying is that the six that were not overturned in June that came from the original 60 are the ones that he wants to, and, and it just, again, not to offer any argument, this is the, the record of the June hearing of what was rescinded and wasn't, and I can proffer that to the, all the parties just so they have it to look at. I would like to have that because I think that I would like, or, or unless you have it, Paul, I want our record to be clear as to exactly what we're doing today. Um, and uh, if we have a piece of paper that lists the six, that would be the best thing for it. Paul, do you have that record? The dilemma, I believe, is going to be that the item numbers, the way they were ordered in one hearing, changed once the 12 items were picked Well, Mr. Hatcher, you were able one, two, to three. find out which was which based upon another document you had. Mm. I think, Mr. Francis, it would be useful to have that. Yeah, piece I think of that's probably going to be the same item I have here. This is the... These are the results of the the Burr Actors appeal on those twelve that and this shows six. No, it shows it shows twelve, but twelve. of those twelve, six were rescinded and six were upheld. And which ones were rescinded? Each one that says rescinded. So one, five. So and I, I can one, I can five, correlate them. I have notes. One five with eight, numbers. Nine. Sorry, can you? Start the only on? reason that those were appealed was because Mr. Bean did not put a code with them, and they addressed that at the state technical board. That that's Mr. Bean's job. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, no, So the remaining of those 12 would be uh, what he's... Six. Saying. Yep. Uh, seven. Yep. Ten. Yep. Eleven. Not twelve. I think the numbers are different. I think what people have been saying one to the other, so this isn't helpful right now. <laughs> Does that show six or seven? Six. Six. seven. The only reason they were numbered for that June appeal, because that was my um, exhibit to the board, uh, and when I was presenting at that June appeal or the Burr Actors appeal, I numbered them to make it easier on, on them to figure out which ones I was contesting as I walked through the list. So that's the only reason they're numbered on that document. Um, I don't know what they were numbered in, in her document in the May appeal. Uh, so that's why the numbering is off. But that's what they refer to when they say the six. <coughs> Paul, oh, can you, they want those minutes again. So those right. numbers don't match with what you have in front of you. We're missing. Well, we've got one extra one somehow. I'm showing one. And we are looking at the June 13th notice of violation. By yeah, that, be, that's the, that's that's the document. document. Three. Yes. That June, yeah, that June 13th derived from the, the May uh, appeal. So the ones we just listed were the ones we denied, rather than the ones we affirmed. Of 
on my document where it says percentage, those were the ones that any anyone that does not have a code violation next to it or a code citation. Yeah, that's what happened. Three, five, seven, ten, eleven. But it should be on the minute somewhere. So that's what it's here. Oh. Then I made the motion. Three, four, six, seven, ten. So this might have been part of the discussion and then we six and that's six. That's what we carry. That's what we carry. You might want to make sure that that numbering matches this and actually look at each individual one and see if you're finding that those are violations. So this was their, this was Barakers' appeal. Okay, so these are the ones that we continued as being an issue. So it, it was not their appeal, it was the Barakers' appeal. So I, I'm, not, make, I'm not caught up to where you are. If you're asking <laughs> right. me, if no, no, you're no, telling no, me, that's I'm okay. Telling, I'm telling you. Okay. So we, Mr. Hatch and I, have to get our notes together, but the, this document is the Barakers' appeal of our previous ruling. So these... Oh, these oh I see. Those are the ones that you still found as violations. Yeah. Uh, yes. So apparently that would be, would have been three from the minutes. Four, six, seven, and that, and that ten. Is. And it relates to, I must have checked one inadvertently. Um, so that would be and that would be are they numbered? This is different from that. In, in what sense? Notion to deny the appeal on items. So I don't know what these minutes are, I'm sorry. That, that is the Barakers appeal okay. of the board's decision. Yeah. To cite these as violations. All okay. Well, so then, what this means then is items one, two, five, eight, nine, eleven were still found to be violations. Uh, the opposite. They were contending that none of them were violations, and we said these will continue to be, in our view. Violations. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, okay. Anything that did not include a, a code citation, the board withdrew. And any one that did include a code citation, the board upheld. Right. Okay. So, and that, let me, all right. So then, three, three. The Burrackers' appeal should not even be considered right now because that happened well, after the fact. That one that be included in that. Yeah. Instead of code citation there. Yeah. No, that was one that they, that was, was not on your minutes. Right. That one was um, rescinded as well because the, um, they found that the, the trusses matched the um, the blueprints, the framing blueprints. So that was the schematic correct from the trust manufacturer. Correct. The the trusses matched the trust manufacturer plans. And Did I not show a thing where the trust manufacturer required those today? Well, I don't know that I can give you evidence on that because that was the issue of that appeal, not this one. But that's what happened on on that day. Is that, that was. That's why number so one. You're saying three. Four. Five. That was not five. Six. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the minutes were correct. Dang it. Is that on the is that on the back of the twelve? Is it yeah, we say that's this on the parade. Right. That's a parade. Right. Right. No, I I understand, but we at this point, are free to make a decision on all of them. On, on all of them. Sure. So, in order to give the GRB, I, I'm following you on this. Sorry. Uh, sorry. I didn't. I, I mean, I am, I am on board with what you're saying. But on the other hand, Mr. McFadden makes a good point that the final outcome 
I think it makes sense that we're consistent with what we sent here for well, what land and any fear. What what the board what the state technical board said to me as I've talked to them is you can accept that twelve after that first time and then I take that directly back. It's like you had the same decision and I can just go directly back to the state. But you can't consider anything after the fact because that's not been entered into evidence as of yet, whatever they appealed. That's why they both couldn't be heard on the same day. Well, you, you see how the timeline works is that, is that she appealed first, this board issued a decision, and the 12 came from the, her appeal, so 12 from 60. And then we appealed the 12, and the board withdrew six or seven of them. And then both parties appealed to the state. So we have to we have to move to twelve. No, no, because the board said that there was a conflict in the May one that was the source of all of the all of the violations. So that the original twelve came from this hearing and, and the board is now reevaluating without a conflict all sixty. So it can determine whether all sixty are violations or zero are, are violations. And if it chooses that five are that's within this board's authority. It's not hamstrung by any former decision that it's made. So if you want to make a motion to find, and they would, we would make these part of our minutes. Uh, this, uh, I think you're, can I word the motion that I think you want to do? Yeah, please, because please. I think that we could get this thing done. Right, please. Uh, I think your motion would be to find for the appellant that there are violations and that those violations are as described in the notice of violation dated June 13th, 2018. And they are uh, numbers three, four, six, seven, ten, and twelve. Yeah, that's it. So if that's your motion, you'd say so moved. So moved. Is that your motion? I second. Motion. Take vote. Take well, a vote. If there's any discussion, you can have that. Do we have any other further discussion before we take a vote? I have none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Uh, so at this point, I would like to conduct, conclude this meeting and make a motion that we adjourn. adjourn. I move we adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Well, good sound.